welcome to all of you, and uh, we're glad you're here. So, first item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. What do I hear from the commissioners? Move that we adopt the agenda. Second. All in favor? Agree. Um, minutes are the next item on the agenda. You've all received copies of the, uh, the minutes from our last meeting. What is the pleasure of the commission? I move that we adopt the minutes from last meeting. Second. Moved and seconded that we approve the minutes from last meeting. All in favor? Okay. All right, new business. Ron or? Oh, Chris, okay. Okay, there we go. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the text amendment to the zoning ordinance for the single family attached zoning district. Uh, a little background that the, uh, the model ordinance that we were using when drafting the initial zoning ordinance provision did not have a uh, category for single family attached dwellings. Um, did have one in the, U, in the UDC, um, but it was uh, woefully inadequate to address um, the development standards that we were uh, working towards. Uh, Towns and Village is a good example of uh, how the single family attached uh, zoning district was used under the UDC, rather inappropriately since it was not actually an attached type of development. Uh, we actually it reinvented the single family attached uh, zoning district in the new code. Um, however, the model code did not have an equivalent district, so we uh, kind of just kind of made one up. And in the application of the new zoning, we found some challenges with regard to some of the setbacks, the distances between buildings, and, this, and the, the difference between a side yard setback on a fee simple attached unit and the side yard setback of a building from the actual property line. So this is intended to address those deficiencies. Uh, the one thing I will point out that, that needs to be corrected is the setbacks in the diagram on this section of the new code. This diagram needs to be updated to reflect the, uh, the new revised setbacks. <coughs> that will be done prior to submission to the city council. Does the commissioner have any questions for Chris? I guess, I mean, I, I, I read through this when I got it last week. And this is just, I mean, I'm guessing it's just, just keeping, I guess, in line or in form with the other zoning rules that we have, because I read that one of the rear sets back went from zero or 15 feet up to 40 feet. We went from 10,000 square feet up to an acre, which is what, 43,560 feet. And that the lot structure looks like the distance must be five to 20 feet. Was there complaints? Is it a fire issue? Is it a density issue? What, what prompted it, I guess? Well, or what, did you just not have anything at all? Yeah, what, what prompted it was that there's a new form of uh, single family attached dwellings really when we see a single family tax, we, we, we mean townhouse development or condo development. Uh, what we're starting to see is corporate owned multifamily townhouses. So they look like traditional townhouses with garages on the front, like they would for a single family uh, fee simple structure, but they're actually corporate owned. And so because there is uh, basically all these buildings, which are basically multifamily, uh, but they still they, we still want to keep them in the development construct of single family attached, but we also don't want them to be restricted to uh, to the setbacks of, of multifamily or, um, or uh, let me rephrase it very simply, uh, a fee simple development on an attached unit has a zero, zero foot set, side yard setback. Um, the distance between buildings under the 
code that we had written was 20 feet uh, for, for multifamily, which is up to 40 feet. Uh, we looked at the, the two comparisons and felt that there were certain things appropriate in some codes that, that should carry over into others and just kind of crafted the new single family ordinance to address both the non-fee simple structure of development and also accommodate fee simple development as well. Are there any examples that currently exist where this would be applicable? Uh, moving forward, um, everything that's single family attached, in fact, we've had discussions, uh, for example, one of the applicants here this evening um, is aware that we are making modifications to the zone code. Um, and there are also several other developments that have come to us in the last several months, which really raised the, the, the challenge in what we have in the, on the books to actually applying it to uh, a, a reasonably developed uh, parcel for this use. So there's there's nothing that we currently have on the ground that reflects the zoning, but it's really more akin to the traditional uh, development of townhouses like we might see in the, the units that are right off the downtown area, uh, as far as the distance between buildings and setbacks of the buildings from the property lines. Uh, and this is much more in keeping with that style of development rather than uh, the, the one that we had adopted previous where you have a 15 foot setback, uh, which is really not adequate for as, as a buffer from joint development. Chris, um, so if a developer develops a new pod or a new uh, piece of land uh, this way, and he's got attached units, att attached townhouse units mm -hmm. um, and then at some point five years down the road uh, decides to sell those units off individually as owner occupied single family units mm -hmm. can he just pick up right where he is and do that that's an interesting question um, because it's all I mean it's somewhat similar to building detached single family mm -hmm. for rent, which is a lot of going on yeah. out there now. Um, but but if we structure it this way, what's you know what's to keep them from making that into owner occupied units and selling them off individually in the future? Well, really nothing um, because. It would, if the buildings are on the ground set to this code, whether it's fee simple and owner occupied or whether it's corporate owned and it's just a multifamily development, these zoning codes are going to still apply. Um, the only difference is if you're making it a fee simple development where the owner owns then the footprint of that structure is their property, mm -hmm. uh, that's really just a subdivision within the development as a whole. The, uh, the, the master parcel is still intact and yeah. probably governed by an H, uh, HOA. Okay. So in, in short, it would not make them legally non-conforming and mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't foresee any reason to encourage or discourage the evolution no. from rental to- I understand that, but it could be one of those situations that we would incur or uh, encounter down the road. Not, I don't think it'll be detrimental uh, to the rest of the development, but uh, could happen. Yeah. Sure. Okay, just making sure I understood. And okay. uh, Chris, we've had a number of these additions to the original document that we received. Are these being incorporated into that document and will we get a uh, a new all upgraded um. yeah there's there's a new version every time we go through this process and that, that that's available online uh, as far as a print document if you need a print document let me know and I'll print one and, 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 and bind it but I've found that it's uh, uh, way too costly to preemptively print 25 units and then all of a sudden three months down the line we change the ordinance and it's out of date so moving forward 
we just we'll, we'll just print them out them on an as needed basis. Otherwise, we have made the electronic copy very efficient in that the table of contents. If you click on something, it takes you directly to that code section. So, um, so it's much more efficient uh, format. Okay, I think we need a uh, public hearing on this item. So at this time, um, anybody wish to come forward and have a comment relative to this change? Seeing none, um, I'll close the public hearing. Ask the commission for your approval. I move uh, to approve the amendment to Article 3, Bill of Zoning Ordinance, Chapter 4, single family attached in table 4.4 modifying lot area setbacks and distance between buildings. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the zoning amendment. All in favor? Okay, approved. Thank you very much, Chris. Okay, next item is the preliminary plat application, trails at Boston <coughs> Place. Mike. Good, good evening, Commissioner. Um, George Thomas Holmes uh, has submitted a preliminary plat for phase three trails at Charleston Place. Um, can we get some? Can you put that plat up? Um, page two. No. Just, pull, just put the plat up. Okay. Um, on the screen, commissioners, and I, and I know you you have it. Uh, we we gave it to you PDF. But uh, what you're seeing is you're seeing the overall uh, the trails at Charleston Place with Phase Three highlighted. Um, this original preliminary plant was was approved by city council sometime back 2005, 2006, in its current form that you're looking at on the screen. Um, uh, phase three has 54 lots. It's zone plan unit development. Uh, nothing has changed from phase one to phase two as far as the zoning goes. Um, 19.42 acres. Uh, minimum lot size is 10,000 square feet. Um, so, um, staff has reviewed the plat for content um, and found it suitable for recommending to be approved. Uh, I, I know we have we have several folks here tonight to speak, and, and uh, I look forward to hearing them speak. Um, I think one of the major content uh, the, um, issues is why don't we have a second entrance for this? Uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, number one being it's the, the access point on this is Georgia DOT uh, Highway 61 and they have spacing requirements on their entrances. Um, the property along 61 south of the entrance going in belongs to Ingalls. They have a huge tract that, that, that belongs to them. Um, we've had some questions about why can't we figure out a way to get construction traffic for phase three to not come through phase one and two. Well, Bay Springs Creek runs the perimeter of this whole development and there are jurisdictional wetlands um, between the B-Flex property that the city owns and the actual developed parcel. So therefore, you, you, we, we, we couldn't make any kind of arrangements to do that because the Corps of Engineers, it takes months sometimes to get that approved if they approve it for you. Um, and our current standards even today only require a second entrance if you have more than 200 units. So that's... What number will they be at? 175. Well, there's roughly 120 current but based on that, um, you know, I've, I've got a couple of full-size sets over there. Folks want to look at them, um, but um, I also sent 
some of the, some of the property owners in, that came and I met with last week. I sent some PDFs out, so I, I'm not sure how they cir got circulated, but um, based on city's regs and zoning, et cetera, et cetera, uh, staff would recommend approval. Can I ask? Commissioner? Yeah, just a couple of questions. When, uh, when this property was developed, I think it was 99, is that right? Oh, it's no, the, the, the first two, the original, I think, was 204, 205, something like that. Yeah. Okay. And when that was approved, phase three was, it was an idea approved at that point in time as well. The overall plan was approved. Obviously, though, that, that plan's expired. So it's not a new idea. No. But it's been an idea for 15 years. Yeah. So anybody that would have bought in there was not a possibility of a phase three. received the phase one construction drawings to Avalmore that has a full signalized intersection at its entrance just pretty close just above this it's not going to really help you that much going back and around Georgia DOT is they, they are very strict on their data requirements if you don't have enough uh, turns listed they will not budge on anything. Um, I don't know where we could go with that. And I, I saw some of the renderings of the homes. And I think I've been through this neighborhood a few times. Uh, these homes that are being proposed, are they in keeping with the size, structure, um, design? quality of the houses that are already currently there as a staff person I would say yes but we have the the applicant is here okay. so we can speak now let me go back to the DOT question now when Avalmore was original when the concept was brought to us we suggested strongly that they provide a roadway connect to Charleston Place um, and that was not part of the first phase one design uh, which if there was a connection made there you could go right up to the signalized intersection and you're out um, i don't know why that conversation was dropped but it certainly can be picked back up and i, and I realize that that I'm more you know is on the table and has been for some time and you know it's almost like the cart before the horse in my opinion that we have uh, development on the ground in both directions right there but yet we we're all holding our breath for Avonmore to come in and save us with our traffic plan so I, just, I appreciate your answer well we're, we're we're hoping that we can still salvage some saving grace so to speak from from that um, but uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't live there, but I can, I can only imagine the frustration and the aggravation. You know, we just got to get to I-20. Well, you got to go down to Bay Springs School, and then, you know, I understand. And, and not only that, but we have a, we, enforcement has been picked up tremendously. And if there's anyone here from Oh, I know, I know uh, exactly what you're talking about. They, they will give you, they will cite you in a heartbeat if you do that. So, so we're just, uh, you know, cash cow right there for the. If if, if we were in control. We wouldn't be talking. What, what are we 
way to approve on this? Just the plan? Just the plan itself, yes. Um, what about all the other information that was provided about an HOA? And well, I, I don't want to speak out of turn with the folks that are here, but uh, as I understand it, a, a formalized HOA was never implemented in phase one and two. Now, phase three has committed to doing an HOA, and I don't know how an HOA would work uh, without including the, the, the top two phases, because you're not going to get everybody to buy in and become members. Um, they just, I've seen that before. They just treat it like it was an independent subdivision. But they have, the, the, the applicant has, they have agreed to do that. I have sample covenants that, that they submitted for that. Of course, we're not at that stage yet. That's at the final plat stage, just where we do all that. Yeah. So um, that really is not part of our consideration. This is just the preliminary plan where they have agreed to design the development, which is phase three, in accordance with what you approve. Are there any other comments by the group? Because I'd like to hear from the uh, developer. The developer. Here's your name, please, and address. Tony Knudsen, I live in uh, Peachtree, Columbus, Georgia. What would you like to hear? Uh, well, I've had questions about the quality of the home. I mean, uh, I've been through there and I've, I saw your application. The size of the home is similar in, in the ilk that's already there. Are you familiar with uh, Summer Sport at Mirror Lake? I am. We built about 40 homes out there, and the standards are going to be very similar to what we have out at Mirror Lake. There'll be Hardy Point siding, Craftsman elevations, brick and stone. Uh, um, accents. So I'm confident that the standards will meet or exceed the existing homes that are out there. Yes, sir. I was uh, just curious what's your um, thoughts on the partial HOA in phase three and not, uh, you know, some of the neighbors in phase one and two? How do you plan on Well, we've dealt with that um, multiple times with. Uh, after the downturn, we purchased, you know, vacant developed lots and subdivisions that were developed prior that either had an HOA um, started but was dissolved. And so depending on the, you know, we've had some smaller lots, 12, 15, where it, it, there really was no sense in uh, establishing an HOA because it, it couldn't uh, support itself. But with 54 units, that's enough to support itself and enough to um, also protect the interest of those 54 buyers and knowing that the homes next to them are gonna be required to uh, uh, live up to the same set of standards as everyone else in, in that section, in that phase. Thank you. Is it water sewage or are you on? Yes, water sewer. That won't be to me, definitely. What is your opinion about this second access to this? Well, you know, I'm not a traffic expert. And, um, we purchased it understanding that it met the, the existing requirements. Um, you know, it, it did not exceed 200 lots. And of course, that's part of our due diligence, making sure that everything meets it. Um, based off of the layout of the property with the wetlands and with the commercial phase that's in the front of it, I mean, I don't see how that is even feasible or could possibly be feasible unless Ingalls was willing to sell you a right away through the middle of the property, which doesn't make sense to me. Any other questions for the developer? So in, in phase three, um, is there a proposed uh, amenity, any amenities? No, no, there's not. If there were, do you think that any of you would get some more maybe consideration out of phase one and phase two residents to join the, the CHOA? Possibly. Possibly. We, we realize that's going to be a carrot and a stick. 
based off of people wanting to maintain their property values and knowing that the more that join, because you know once one joins, then that is uh, that subsequently that's tied to that lot. So the, the following homeowner will have to uh, join the HOA as well. So it, it, over time, it could build up enough momentum to where there was a you know a majority on phase one and phase two as well. I remember hearing several years ago uh, from owners of property in Charleston Place requesting um, housing chickens uh, on their property. Um, I don't know that that still exists. That came before the Planning and Zoning Commission, and we denied it. Uh, However, it went to the council and they approved. Um, now, looking at this HOA, uh, <laughs> that could not be possible uh, in your phase three. That's correct, no chickens. <laughs> or other what about goats? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no non-domesticated uh, animals would be allowed. I certainly love that, but um, it has happened. And then we went on from there to goats. As yeah. <laughs> as uh, Tom says. Uh, I, I certainly would not like to see that happen again. Uh, but any other comments or questions? Yeah, I just wanted to ask, what is your proposed uh, dues and what would they, uh, what would the HOA essentially be responsible for out of those dues? Uh, the, the dues would probably, annual dues would be somewhere in the 250 to $300 range. Um, and that's going to be the administration uh, enforcement, and then we would have uh, maintenance for the common areas, the detention pond. Um, the detention pond would probably be the number one uh, cost associated with that 250 to 300 dollars, because you know at some point uh, that's going to require upkeep. That will be the responsibility of Phase Three HOA. Again, I think the HOA is not part of our consideration um, and then one you know once we're finished they'll HOA will take control and they'll have the ability to do whatever they want to with the with the dues well some of us are very aware of uh, such things happening so. <laughs> um, if there are no other questions I would open um, this to public hearing Tony thank you very thank much you. Um, thank you, sir. So anybody wishing to come forward, please state your name, your address. Sharon, some of those comments, uh, 441 Charleston Place. And I have a number of uh, questions from um, members in our community. And we did meet with Mr. Elliott and he answered quite a few of those, but we still have additional ones. We weren't quite aware that only one person could speak for the group, but uh, everyone came out wanting to be involved in the process? I, I disagree with that. It's open to the public. Oh, I saw Every, that at the every, bottom of it. Everybody wants to speak. It's open to the public. It's open to the community. Okay. Uh, the concern, uh, which I'm glad you touched on, we came out in, a number of years ago trying to get that cut over. And now we're talking about 54 more homes. And the subdivision has a small entryway. So additional concerns with the heavy equipment, trucks, coming in and out. We already get backed up at certain times of the day. School buses coming in. The streets are very narrow. Um, two cars can hardly pass each other. And with the construction that's going on now, we've had instances where that builder was not accommodating to the residents and you only have one way in and one way out. So that is a big concern in terms of traffic flow. Um, safety for our kids, you know, playing out on the streets, et cetera. I don't know if this is the correct form for all of this, but again, just indicating um, the concerns that we have. Um, I know uh, we did, I know this HOA is not a topic, but a number of years ago, residents came together to try to get phase one and phase two to form an HOA and the majority of them were adamant about not wanting that to happen and they still are. So that later will probably be somewhat of an issue. 
But another concern that they have is that there are um, those whose properties are but up to the new construction, concerned about whether it will remain undisturbed in terms of trees and is it gonna back up directly onto their property? Will there be a buffer? So uh, again, not sure this is the exact form. We just wanna get all of these things out. So um, worried about uh, hours of construction. I think by law, those are set in terms of when construction can begin and when it has to end. I'm not sure about weekends, uh, if construction is allowed possibly on Saturdays. So again, there's just a multitude of questions, which I'm sure I'm not touching on all of them, but um, some of them have been answered, others haven't. We put information out on our neighborhood uh, next door platform. So those who are members of that will have some of the information that Mr. Elliott per provided, but there may well be others in the audience who are not, do not access that and are not familiar with uh, what was stated in the meeting. So it's just a big build out for us. We're not a big community. Uh, we're what, 120? We're talking about 54. So the cut through is big. Our attachment to add more was talked about. I was at some of those meetings and it just kind of dropped or disappeared. We have problems now. So we're just concerned that the build out is gonna create a lot of additional problems. And we know there's gonna be noise and dirt and dust and all that kind of stuff. So we're concerned about mitigating that as much as possible as well. So we just, you know, we love our little community. Um, we don't have an HOA and yet I think we maintain it rather well. We have a small little neighborhood association that does what it can. But there is, again, a huge amount of concern about this build out. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Anyone else wish to speak? Oh, 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 okay. Uh, can I do say? Uh, it's not mine. Oh, okay. Hi. Your name and address? Uh, June please? Clark, um, 243 Riley. Um, can you zoom me in on it? Um, I'm phase one, lot 34 in the front row. It's where the square box um, mm -hmm. takes in. Yeah. It's right there. You, know. you see the writing in the text box? Come on, come on. Oh, I no, I can forgive you. Okay. No, come back. We'll go down. Yeah. Keep going down. Yeah. Keep going. Hold them right there. See the box? It says yes. no. Yeah. Okay, so the buffer. Um, now, what is that going to do? That's that's keeping the. So can you explain? I want to know what's like. Is that keeping something from? I know that's a creek. Yeah. Go ahead. When phase one and phase two were developed. Um, the original developer violated that stream buffer. Mm -hmm. EPD did a mandate, a consent order that says that 100 foot undisturbed buffer shall remain in place in perpetuity. So nothing can happen inside that shaded area. No cutting, no trimming, no anything. So that's how that undisturbed buffer came. And we have stream buffers all, you know, but that one has been uh, imposed by Georgia EPD. Okay. All right, so my thing is structural, I guess, um, my house was built in 2014 and we know about like the nail pops and all that good stuff, but uh, I saw them when they were out building and I know they put railroad tires uh, un under there to, to keep everything in place. I think my foundation is either 19 or 13. I don't know how far down it goes, but I'm on crawl space. Um, the water rushes off of that buffer that you were explaining. Uh, it comes down like a raging river, okay? So I have some videos uh, whenever we have strong rains and stuff, and I don't pay a flood insurance. Um, but that lot, both my neighbor, um, 
it looks like it looks like a gold thing. Okay. Um, and it it'll it's mushy. Um, the offset for me, I can't put anything back there. Um, I don't walk back there. Uh, I, I let the rabbits roam and everything. But uh, it is awful to say the least and the most. I have cut back some of the trees, but not a lot of them. Um, that's because it kind of gets snaky or what have you. But um, the shifting, my, the columns have turned a bit up front. Um, so my concern when you all, when I, and when I saw that, I almost passed out. Because I actually were thinking you guys were just gonna stay on the back, back side. I did not know you were gonna be in my backyard. Like literally you're in my, it's just like my backyard. And I'm like, Jesus. So um, I don't know what's gonna happen to the rest of my backyard, basically, um, because it like flood, flood. Um, the neighbors to my left have a fence uh, and it's, it's just not gonna last long. And then my neighbors to my right, they only went halfway over the fence. Uh, and that is because, I mean, it's gonna ride. Um, it, that rain is awful, the flooding is awful. And it comes down, like I said, um, it's like a river when it comes, like a waterfall, basically. So um, that's my concern. Uh, and my lot is, is, I think it's the, it was one of the, it's on the bottom half, it's like one, is this 119? It's not small, but I mean, there's nothing I can do with it, you know? Um, that was the builder's, I guess it's sale for me, <clears throat> but um, to say the least, it was a negative on my part because it's mushy, there's nothing I can do with it. So I, I, I'm all for you guys building in there. I think it's awesome. Um, I, I think that um, it's a plus for Villa Rica. Um, I do think we need another way out of the neighborhood. Um, yes, I think we do need some sort of association um, that probably would help with the renter part um, of the situation. But I mean, I'm for um, real estate and development myself. So those are the pluses. Uh, the negative is just my backyard and my neighbor's backyard situation and the flooding part of it. But I'm all for the development part of it. I have nothing negative to say about that. It's just my dwelling is going to probably suffer some more, you know? So, um, yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Eric Mitchell. I live at 2742 South Van Wert. <clears throat> My property backs up to lots 139 and 140. And there's a small creek that runs along the lots there. And I did not see it on the plat. And I was wondering if it had been identified. What number? I'm sorry. Uh, 139 and 140. Jerry Doyle Place. Jerry yeah. Yeah. Right here. I got it. And what what is the buffer to stay off of the creek? We have uh, the minimum 25 foot state buffer plus Villa Rica's 25 foot stream buffer plus 25 foot impervious buffer on all stream, all state water. And that's not additive, they just all exist at the same time. 75 feet, in the last 25 oh, feet yeah. of impervious buffer, you can encroach into it, but you can't have a, any kind of structure with a permanent foundation in it. So it's 75 feet of buffer effectively? Yes. So has it, has it been identified? Because I, I did not see it on the flat. <coughs> The buffer has not been identified on plan. And because also it says on there that they would have to raise those lots to get them out of the floodplain. And my property is already the wetland like the city's is. So I was wondering if that was going to cause more runoff if they did elevate that back there. If you did get a heavy rain, would it push more onto my property? The, uh, the floodplain question that come up in the, uh, the review of the plant um, that floodplain listed on this plant is a uh, is an A zone, which is, which is the elevation has not been defined. 
uh, that will have to be done prior to final planning. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Donald McCain at uh, 454 Johnson Place. I have a question for the developer. My lot is the last lot before the new development. It was, the wood was shattered on the house because the last one I did. Will he honor the, where he's, where he's starting, will he incorporate my, my property? and fixing the land, you know, where the landscape on. It's flooded over down the end. And if he just do where his property starts, the one company, my property of good house, where he do the landscaping with where he incorporate what's left, where it's left off into his development. You understand what I'm saying? Not entirely. My lot was carefully made when it was done, right? And right, because I had to face the mailbox as soon as I got there. Because it was done with some concrete form material. So anyway, it's the last part, it's the last house. So it's, you know, some of the work was there. Especially the landscape. We you, when you start off there, buy the lot. Will you incorporate my property into the landscape where you start off and go forward? Well, we have a an obligation to keep water off of your your property once we develop a lot next year. Yeah. I don't know if water is the uh, issue that you're concerned about. Mm -hmm. What other what other landscaping would you be referring to? That we the whole when 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 the house was, when the last house was built. It was developed like you know in the area and it was heavily done. So it went down like it was supposed to be, right? So if, if you develop next door to it and don't come up to where to my property and go over, it would be shattered because it wasn't done. Will you incorporate my property into the landscape of the next property? 454 is the last one on the end. I have to go over there and cut the lot next door to me to keep them coming on my property. Because right? no one does anything to, to the property. What lot is yours? 454. Um, that's a street address. Do you know the lot number? No, I don't. But, but it's the end. It's the last house I'm going to go to me. I'm Charles the Place. 159. Oh, oh, right here. Oh, 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 are you saying that the lawn wasn't done or the No it wasn't. I had to do a whole lot of redoing the, the, the work that was done. I guess because they were paid down and was shattered down. It was done real bad. Okay. Um without looking at Well you can sit it to look into but you understand what I'm saying. If you just develop your property and stop in mind where it where it boils up. It would be shattered because it wasn't done. It's it, it mud and what it is, it's the bad with the seed or anything. Yeah, we, we'd be glad to look at it. Cause it's it's something that could be done in a final plot uh, as yeah. opposed to the district. Because the ground don't want to even take care of the ring, and I have to go out there and take care of the night in mind. But you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Well, they will consider that, so. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Any other uh, persons that wish to come forward and address? Yes, thank you.
My name is Claire Authors, and I have a 207 Rallyway at the corner of Charles and Rand. And I purchased my home in 2006. At the time when I purchased, I was told that there was going to be a blight on 61. That never happened. And at no time were we ever informed, at least I was never informed, that there was going to be any other phase of development. Now, after 15 years, I am shocked to hear that we're going to have 54 more homes with 200 more cars. I mean, this uh, this is a safety concern, and, and it really bothers me. And everybody else is concerned for safety, and so much because this should never have happened. It, it, it is difficult getting out of there. It's difficult getting in there. And if we have an emergency back there, everybody will be dead. And that really concerns me. We need to do something about that, sir. That cannot happen. We need another access in and out of there. Because if we don't, this, anything can happen back there and we cannot get out. So, so this is the reason why I'm here. We need to have enough an alternate access because access and egress is a problem. It's a safety concern. And besides, I was lied to. We were told that there was going to be a light there. We cannot get in or out of there. And if there's an emergency, we're stuck back there. We can't get out. 54 more homes on top of what we already have. Each home currently has four cars. So multiply that by four. We're going to have over 500 cars trying to get out of there, sir. If we have any emergency, we're stuck. We'll all be dead. And this is the reason why I'm here. And, and this is my greatest concern. And it should be a concern to everybody else. It's a safety issue. That, that's why I'm here. It's great concern. Thank you very much. Any other persons? Yes, sir. <clears throat> My name is uh, Joe Walls. I live at 420 Charleston Place. So I have a couple concerns. My biggest one being we have four homes that were just built in our subdivision, along with four more being built that are nowhere near the style homes that we have. My big concern is, is the, the developer going to live up to the standards that we already have? Because to me, no offense if anybody bought those homes, but they don't meet our style homes. They're split level homes. We all have ranch homes. Uh, another concern is like, I live beside that new development. They work all the way up till night. And that's a big concern for me. I have two young children that I try to get in bed at a decent time. They're hammering away. We have, let's see, last month, they dropped off a bulldozer. There's no turnaround for 18 wheelers. He had to back all the way down the road. My kids play on those roads. I have an eight-year-old and a two-year-old. My eight-year-old rides her bike. There's not a walking path all the way through our subdivision. So for me, it's a concern for my family. And I understand like development is great. We all love development. It's great for the community. It's great for Villarica. But the safety concerns for our families way outweighs the development of 52 homes. So for me, those concerns are, what are you gonna do with getting 18 wheelers in and out, you know? Uh, another concern too is the entranceway, and this will be another date, but who's going to own the entranceway? Is it going to be the HOA? Is it going to be the hundred and something semi-odd homes that already live there? And like imposing their will upon us, like what's that going to look like? How would that be handled? Uh, just a lot of concerns for me. Thank you. Sir, I'm, I'm not sure I understand what you're, what you're talking about. I mean, is Who's going to own the entrance way? So the entrance way, if, if there's you're an having, entrance way there now, right? There's entrance way there now. So, and we do have our sign for Charleston Place. Like, who would do the upkeep for that? Is that going to stay on us as residents, the HOA? Are they going to upgrade that entrance in any fashion, which would be good for us? I'm just asking, like, who's going to have ownership of that entrance way? 
So like right now, currently we got two nice old ladies that take care of our interest plans right here. Right there, there. Weekly. Wait, wait, wait. wait. They're not old. Old her. But they take care of the interest. They, they, they love doing that. So for me, it's like who, I mean, are they going to take that away? Like, I'm just a lot of concerns there. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Anybody else wishing to come forward? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see no more takers, so I'll close the, uh, the public hearing and revert back to the commission. And uh, Bobby, anything additional that you would care to say? Mr. Chairman, no. Uh, it's unfortunate that, that the uh, constraints are where they are. Um, I, I feel for the residents, but you know, it's, uh, there's nothing we can do at this point. Again, we're just considering this as a preliminary plan and there will be finalized plans before with some decisions to be made. The, uh, after the preliminary plans approved, then the construction drawings will be designed, put together, reviewed. Um, when everything's built and the streets are built, you know, a final plat stage comes into play. Uh, that's when it gets recorded. Consideration for an HOA will get, will get considered at that point. That final plat goes to city council for approval. Um, but before we get there, we have maintenance bonds to put in place and street light fees to pay and a bunch of other stuff. You'll have to go along before we recommend approval to council. So a lot more detail to, yes. to be followed. And just so I'm clear, the idea of this phase three has technically there's been a plat since 04, 05, correct? Yes. In, in, in fact, the one you're seeing on page on P, P1.2 is is the original plat with phase three just highlighted. Yes. And it's been, where has it been for the last 15 years? 20 in, in a file. In the city hall, yeah, they could have, any resident or anybody could have come and got it, correct? When this was originally developed <laughs> or presented, really? the um, the name of this thing originally was Bay Springs, and then the one across on the east side was renamed Bay Springs East. And at some point, this was changed to the Trails of Charleston Place. And this fellow who bought the property. I mean, he bought it, it was available for anybody to buy, right? Yes, sir. And make a buy. Yes, we, we had. Uh, it was available. They could afford the money. We, we had it. several folks. Left this, this rule of the one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was available for anybody to get. Well, I mean, I, I gentlemen brought up a pretty uh, good point. I know that uh, back in 08 or 09, um, I guess that was right about when, you know, most everybody was, was, was tucking their tail and running, and Charleston Place suffered because of it, because there was a clubhouse. There was a pool right there at the entrance to the left. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many years later it finally got filled in, but who, do we know who owns that property? Who's got title to that previous HOA property? Because that is a, a valid concern on the entrance. I mean, I think that it would also somehow play into a bigger picture of people joining into an HOA if they would expect the developer to take care of that front. But, you know, well, your on that? I, I will, I, maybe I won't get fired for making these comments, but uh, um, the, the city shared in dropping the ball on the trails at Charleston Place back for, when phase one and phase two were done, even with, with the downturn. I mean, sidewalks in there were the responsibility of the, of the builder who was building homes and the city staff should have maintained that happening as each house is, what we do it today is, is each builder is responsible for the sidewalk in front of his lot. And the seals are not issued until that sidewalk is in. Well, that didn't happen back in the day. Therefore, you've got checkerboard areas in there. And the sidewalk, I think is, if I remember right, it's about two feet wide, wow. which is, you know, ADA compliance is five feet. Now, we, we have, as city staff, we have talked uh, about um starting a sidewalk program and not just in in, in these type of developments but citywide we got we got 
Uh, our walkability is uh, not really decent, but it, it could be improved in lots of areas. Uh, but we've got subdivisions like this where uh, you've got sidewalks in front of three houses, no sidewalks in front of two, sidewalks in front of three. So those would obviously qualify at some point in the future to go in and fill those in. But um, uh, the, the whole HOA concept on phase one and two, the, the city should have ensured that that, that that happened. You know, I mean, really, it's not that hard, but uh, we, 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 we had some, we had some um, staff shortages back in the day, and I'm not making any excuses for the city, but um, we've got staff today that this kind of stuff will never happen. Um, but, I, you know, back to your question on the, we can find who, who, who the, the owner is of that lot one. These ladies are taking care of it. Oh, yeah. But usually a subdivision sign at an entrance like that is usually taken care of by the HOA. Um, that's what that's what dues go toward, that kind of thing. Um, so I, don't, I can't answer his question because I, I don't know, you know what the specifics are and the conditions are to in place to make that happen other than these fine, nice little ladies here that take care of it. Um. Well, again, we are to consider this preliminary plan. Uh, we've heard from staff, we've heard from the community. What is the commission's pleasure? regarding the preliminary plan application for the trails at Charleston Place, phase three. Move that we accept uh, and approve the application uh, as proposed. Uh, second. Okay, we move and seconded that we approve the preliminary plan application. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, Bear in mind, uh, those of you who are here speaking, this will come up again at the city council meeting for their approval of this. So mm -hmm. you're welcome. John, this does not go to council. Okay, all right. The, the, final, the final plan will go to council. Uh, so bear in mind, this is not the end of, uh, of everything. So, but this is approved and um, we really appreciate your comments and uh, they're sincere and we welcome them, so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and some of you had questions that related to your own individual circumstances, position of your lot relative to the new development and things of that nature. Uh, I would uh, recommend strongly that you arrange to meet with the developer uh, at your site and explain your concerns and the, the problems and see what uh, what can be worked out. I'm bidding that you can work out a solution that you find satisfactory, um, mutually agree agreeable. Uh, if you would just simply sit down and talk reasonably uh, with these folks. Now, the people who are least likely to be reasonable in this is the Georgia Department of Transportation. <laughs> and I, that's a little bit, you know, kidding, but I've had experience, direct experience with Georgia DOT since 1966. So I've had a little time with them. And, um, I'm telling you, you know, uh, they are, um, they're difficult at best. And it's usually their way and, and their decision is final. However, I will say that people who have good, well-reasoned arguments uh, can prevail with them. Uh, but you've got a multitude of, um, governments to deal with to get another proper crossing of the major highway there. You've got Carroll County, you've got the city of Little Ricca, 
and uh, the state of Georgia represented by GDOT. So somebody's got to bring all of those elements together and try to reason together to see if there is a solution that can be reached for uh, to change the ingress and egress. Um, otherwise, I would also recommend going back to um, Avamore's the developers and see if you can resurrect that road up to their entrance. But I think those are the, um, we don't have any direct control. I can't reach out, none of us can just say, whatever kind of vote we take doesn't affect uh, GDOT. So uh, you've got to find a way to work with them and to solve your problem and get what you're after. I've been impressed with the developer and his consideration and concern and I think you'll find him very reasonable to meet with and have those discussions. So, okay, let's move on. Uh, Bobby? Mr. Hanneback, I, I, I will uh, I'll commit to do this. Um, when the construction drawings are ready to stamp and we're ready to do a pre-construction meeting, I will be more than willing to let the residents know what's going on and when that's going to happen. Uh, if, if I've got a good point of contact, uh, I, I know that I've been emailing back and forth with Miss Anita Haynes, uh, and, and I don't know if she's the spokesperson for the neighborhood, but, but I'd be willing to, I've got, folks, I've got uh, a bunch of my cards that y'all are welcome to them. Take you one and uh, send me an email uh, find me somebody or a group of people that I can reach out to when we get to that point. That way, uh, I, I got blasted this morning about we're, 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 we're resurfacing some streets and reed plantation and our paving contractor went ahead and started this morning without giving any notice, which we, we sometimes we give notice, sometimes we don't. It depends. And of course, I've, I've been, I've been uh, <clears throat> dealing with some, some issues with that today. So. Uh, I don't want that. I don't want the, the construction equipment to show up right in the middle of these folks' lives, and they're wondering what's going on. But I'll be willing to, because uh, they're not going to start any construction till after we have a pre-construction meeting and a land disturbance permit is issued. Again, folks, you'll find the staff, Bobby and his uh, administration, very helpful and very willing and very cooperative. So take advantage of of that. So. Okay, next item. I guess we won't go to the next one. <laughs> Bobby and everybody in Charleston Place, it looks like the Ingalls own both sides of Vicksburg yeah. mm -hmm. all the way up until the rental home that I guess was the lot for the pool at one time. Yeah, they're yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 yeah, there may be. Okay. Next item is uh, RA0121 and PA0321, Rock Haven Homes. Um, Ron? Good evening, uh, Chairman and uh, Commissioners. Uh, <coughs> application RA-01-21 and EA-03-21 is an application um, on a 21.74 acre parcel um, for rezoning uh, from commercial medium density C2 to single family attached SFA. Uh, Ron, hold sure. off a minute. Sure. Will you please uh, exit? Matt? Matthew? Step outside for your, your conversation. Okay, Ryan. Thank you. Sure, sure. Um, the the applicant is here tonight. Um, they're proposing uh, 210 townhome um, units and attached buildings. Thank you. Um, these will be in attached units, it's 210 um, total, no more than eight units per building. And uh, they're proposing a density of 9.62 dwelling units an acre. 
uh, which is well below uh, the required density and the or the maximum density in the SFA zone. Um, so uh, for the public and for the record, this um, application is at Highway 61 and 101, which is Industrial Boulevard and, and Leggett Drive. So this is north of West Bankhead Highway. The applicant is here um, for any questions and it's nice to take any questions you have. Mr. Johnson, just so I'm reading it right, on page uh, 5 of 18 that you gave us, there's some bulk requirements for single family tax zoning district. And you noted that there's some required and then there's some proposed. And then you noted there's some conforming and non-conforming. And you noted that the minimum rear setback was 15 feet, correct? Mm -hmm. You'll notice the middle of that yes. chart. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, did we just not move that to 40 feet? Is that not what we just voted on to begin with? Correct. So, and, and we actually, uh, we talked a little bit before, um, but I, I did some, uh, some thinking today yeah. um, a little bit and um, it appears that uh, because of the timing of this application, um, the time of application trumps time of decision. Okay, so it's so grandfathered in. It'll be, yeah. Okay, so it's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, in that regard. So that's why I wanted to, I yes. was reading the two. Okay, that's fine. Apologize about that. No, 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 that, that's quite all right because it was a little confusing because I read that portion and I read this portion. And then the, um, there are some portions in that particular section that are left as unknown. Yep. Maximum building coverage, maximum building height, maximum impervious coverage, minimum heated square feet, and all of that is unknown, 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 unknown. Is that something that we should concern ourselves with here, or is that more of a final flat decision? No, um, uh, specifically, this is a rezoning um, only, and since the commission only has jurisdiction over a rezoning and yes, not sir. the variance portions, um, we, we couldn't take that into account tonight, but the purpose, the reason that that is unknown is just simply because we don't have any um, architectural plans uh, or elevation drawings um, so far um, for this application. Um, so we, we could not base our standards on um, or, or base their submittal on our standards. Now I did read in the back that your recommendation, if I read it correctly, mm -hmm. um, Section B or Section 5 on page 12 a local government has adopted a land use plan whether the zoning proposal is in conformity with policy and intent of the land use plan. The rezoning is not supported by the comprehensive plan. Um, if you would just explain to me what is meant by that, that this was intended for an industrial activity center and this is, that is not what this is. That's, what's that meant? Yes, so um, the land use map um, that we have that's been adopted, the future land use map, um, it indicates this area is for industrial activity, activity area. That's what it labels it as. Um, the industrial activity area allows for primarily industrial and commercial uses. Uh, because this is a residential use, um, it's a, essentially a multifamily use, um, it does not meet any standards. There's no density um, standards that are given in the comprehensive plan to go off of um, because this was never intended for residential development. And certainly that area is heavily uh, industrial race right now. It, it is, but it's, it's also a, a real a hodgepodge of uses in the area. Across Highway 101 are apartment units and um, there's to the north and to the west there's industrial activity, there's uh, commercial to the south, um, so it really lies in the middle of all three of these things. Um, so it's, uh, I can only imagine that it would have been back, back when the future land use map was adopted initially that it probably was very difficult to uh, assign a category to it. But those current houses and units are across the industrial highway. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now you also noted in some of your recommendations there are variances that are being requested. And you mentioned that the variances include the 35 foot setback from Leggett Drive, 25 foot interior streets. Uh, they want a 15 foot setback and 20 foot from interior streets. 
Also the livable area facade, 24 in the SFA single family attached zone. Uh, they, they propose a 20 foot wide with single car garage. Uh, now these are some of the variances that are being requested and those are for our consideration, are they not? No, um, no at variances all? at all. Okay, so, but they were mentioned in the report as far as their variances are asking. But those are strictly for building, not for zoning. Uh, they're, they're specifically for the city council to, um, to decide on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just make sure, because I was reading this, I just want to make sure, mm -hmm. because it was in here, I want to make sure what we were able to actually consider. Yes. Understood. Yeah, no variances. Yeah. Any other comments? Uh, no other, no other comments on that. Comments from the commission? Questions for Ron? Okay, there are none. Um, I would like to hear from the applicant. Um. Hey, good morning. My name is Joe Fowler. I'm from Douglasville. And joining me tonight is Mr. Brad Hughes, who is an official with Rockhaven Homes, and also Jeff Matthews, who's on the back row back there. Now waked up. He's one of the owners of the property. He and Bernie Redding own it. It's currently zone C2 commercial. It's been zoned commercial for 25 years or more. During that time, it's been marketed for sale by the owners, but there were never any serious suitable buyers. He's gonna talk about that in just a minute with your permission. Sometime back, you may remember that the city itself moved to administratively rezone this property, I think it was last year, to light industrial, but Jeff and Vernell wanted to leave it as commercial in the city at that particular point in time, agreed to his request and left it as it is. And so with your permission, before I talk specifically about the project, Jeff will give you a brief summary of all that's happened to date with respect to the rezoning and why it's suitable to move it to residential, notwithstanding what Mr. Pilgrim mentioned a moment ago about the comprehensive plan calling for it to be light industrial. So if it's all right with you, Mr. Chairman, he'll come forward and make a few comments. Then I'll re make a few more and then turn it over to Brad. Yeah, we had uh, some discussion about this at the uh, two meetings ago when <coughs> Jeff decided uh, to keep the current. So, so Yes, sir. Go ahead. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm Jeff Matthews, 215 West Bankhead Highway. And as Mr. Fowler said, Mr. Redding and I have owned this property since the late 1980s, and we've seen a lot of changes during that period of time. And it's hard to foresee with a piece of property. My grandmother lived out on Rockmark Road, lived here a long time and she even had a cow in town it's been that long ago because she lived to be 90 and she had a lot of countryisms or witticisms or little sayings that i wish i'd paid more attention to when i was much younger but i see some of the validity of them now and one of the things she used to say that there was many a slip twixt cup and lip and she didn't realize that that actually came from Greek mythology, from the Odyssey. It's been used by Charles Dickens and a lot of other people, but it truly applies to real estate because it's hard to foresee the things that can happen. Since we've owned this piece of property, we've had the 96 Tax Act, we've had the dot-com bubble, we've had Enron collapse, we've had the 2007 meltdown that we've talked about earlier here tonight, and then we've had something that nobody could have foreseen, which is COVID. So to say that we've had some unforeseeable things uh, is an understatement, but we have tried to maintain this piece of property. We've had over the years, it was zoned, has been zoned commercial, and we have shown it, we've had C.B. Richard Ellis, Jones Lang LaSalle, Ackerman and Company. We've had several people now, the new marketing methods are Land Watch and LoopNet. We've had this piece of property on that. And we've had many, many pieces or, or people who want to take a piece of it. They want to carve out two acres, five acres. They want to do uh, an impound yard for a record service. They want to do 
a park a toy truck parking facility like you see up on 41 around Lake Alatoona. And we have not chosen to do that because the piece of property is, is well located. It's, it's a great piece of ground. And it is not big enough as we talked about last year when we were talking about this change of zoning instituted by the city. It's not big enough for a, today's industrial users because those folks are looking for a 400,000 foot tilt wall building and it's just not big enough for that from an industrial perspective. But in the commercial side of it, what has hampered it, but I think is a plus from a residential side, is that it does have 150 feet of right of way that nobody realizes because there's a 300 foot right of way on 101 from there all the way up to the intersection of 101. And I'm calling Industrial Boulevard 101 from its intersection going north at 61. So there is an additional 150 foot right of way on the west side of that road. So DOT owns that. Now, as Mr. Flowers alluded to, DOT, it's hard to predict what they're going to do. And their timeline is somewhat a, more of a geologic timeline because <laughs> we've been dealing with this new North Bypass now for 30 years. I thought it was going to be put in when I was driving an 85 Chevrolet pickup truck, <laughs> but it hadn't happened. And I don't know, I'm not sure it's moving forward now, but there's just no way to know when those things will happen or when they will occur. But we have stayed the course, we've held out and we've gone through these ups and downs and different vagaries of the real estate cycle. And we now have somebody that's wanting to do residential, they need to do higher density. And I was really encouraged by these folks from Charleston Place because a couple of them said they love development. I'm going to get their names. I was <laughs> encouraged by that. Because they realize that it's going to help us all. And if you look in other places, you are seeing actually industrial buildings converted to loft apartments and converted to residential uses. If you look at Pont City Market, the old big Sears building in Atlanta. Um, the armor yards over there. Some of the nicer, newer stuff in Atlanta is being done. It's a conversion. And here we've got someone that's willing to take a chance on Villa Rica and come out here and do a quality residential, single family for sale product, not for rent. They'll have an HOA in place to start with. They won't have to be putting it in phase one, two, or three. It will be in place to start with. And I'll let them speak to the particulars, but I just know that this is an opportunity for a couple of things. It's a chance for Villa Rica to get some new housing, which we definitely need, and I'll get paid. So that money will get rolled <laughs> over several times in the local community. And I appreciate y'all's time, and I certainly appreciate your willingness to serve like this. And if you have any questions of me, I'll be around after the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Thanks. Folks are going to be able to sell his 85 Chevrolet pickup truck. Uh, so one of the uh, council has to uh, be excused for a few minutes. Can we hold off and pick this up in a couple of minutes? Oh, he's going away. We're going to hand out some black okay. plants that you can see. We've got a color version of it. Yeah, no problem.
the Dodge truck is going to be for the For the Dodge truck. True. Oh, he's a Consistent with the uh, drawing that we had supplied. Pardon me, sir. Looks like this is very consistent with the drawing. <laughs> Commissioner is back, so I really thank you for your uh, patience, but um, you may continue, sir. Development is proposed by Rock Haven, as was mentioned, and it builds single family homes from the 200s to north of the 300s and above in the metro area with four, five, and six bedrooms, and they also build townhome communities from the 200s and above, all of that in the metro area. It has completed 27 projects in that area, and that is a total of roughly 3,500 homes. The plan before you anticipates, as was mentioned, 210 townhomes, which given the setback, the screen buffer along the front, other development conditions, that's that density of 9.6 units per acre. The, as was also mentioned a moment ago, the ordinance would permit up to 379 units. The homes will be three bedrooms, two and a half baths, nine foot ceilings on the main floor, sort of that open concept living spaces, crown molding, kitchen island, double sink, single car garage. Here you see the site plan and this is a drawing of what was a product as they had done before in another area. This is precisely what's going to be done here. What we're working on with respect to variances that council mentioned a moment ago is what was, what's happening with respect to offsets so that it's just not flat across the front and great working with the city we recognize we've got to tweak our plan a little bit we are on the way there we're just not there yet we're talking about distances between the buildings set back from the front what you see on the original drawing shows a 30 it's on the overhead a 35 foot buffer and i think that is correct but Brad will talk about that in just a few moments. As was mentioned a moment ago, the townhomes will be sold as fee simple with a starting price above $200,000. And they are designed with what they call a smart home technology. And that's everything from remote temperature controls to indoor exterior security, 24 hour monitoring and the amenities proposed for the site will be the three or more of those required by the city ordinance. A total of 34% of the site is common space. The ordinance requires 12%. As to the comprehensive plan in the history of the commercial rezoning, there's simply been no interest in any light industrial user that would fit on that site, given, as was mentioned a moment ago, what the market now says you have to have for a built up concrete building, 400,000 square feet or something like that. One of the standards about approving rezoning is how long it sat vacant in its current condition. There are a list of eight of those are called the Steinberg criteria, but if it's been sitting vacant for a long time with a use that would otherwise be permitted under the ordinance, then the government has to look at it and say, well, why is that the case? And what we believe here is the reason is because the market has moved in this area. Mac and I talked about the housing across the street and some issues going on with respect to the nature of that development. We believe the Homeowners Association will maintain this as a quality 
place where there are the people who would be able to afford a home of this nature or enjoy living. If you notice in the impact analysis, there are all those variances that Mac alluded to earlier, but we are working on those with the designer. In fact, we had a good meeting at City Hall a couple of weeks ago to talk about those, and we're still in the process of getting that worked out. Ray would like to come up now, Mr. Chairman, and give you a brief overview of the project and answer any specific questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman, Commissioners, Brad Hughes, uh, 4062 Peach Street Road, Northeast Atlanta, Georgia 30319. Um, appreciate y'all, uh, y'all's time tonight and y'all's service uh, to the uh, to city of Villarica. We're excited about um, being here in the city. We've uh, been looking for deals uh, in the city of Villarica uh, a little over two years, and uh, you know we're extremely excited about this opportunity. We think it's a perfect fit. Uh, what Mr. Matthews was saying about the um, housing shortage um, in Bill Rega, we think this is a you know the perfect location for it. Uh, it's set up for for townhome development. Um, it will be uh, for sale, uh, fee simple uh, townhomes uh, with an HOA. All of our communities uh, you know have HOAs, um, and most of the time we have to submit our uh, declaration of covenants and restrictions um, that's already been recorded. Um, with the county at the uh, final plat submittal before we you know, have our final plats approved, so we're used to that. Um, that's you know what we expect uh, to be done here. Um, the uh, with the uh, the 150 foot you know setback, as Mr. Matthews says, that is a, a pretty uh, unique uh, situation with this property. It gives us an extra buffer without us having to you know give away you know property that you know has extra. Um, uh, right away, so that gives us an extra buffer from the road in any you know future uh, road extension widening of the road that's already taken into consideration with, and then we have our um, you know detention pond and our great lawn amenities pavilion, uh, gazebo, you know dog park, community garden, all that um, up front as well. Uh, we have several different community uh, guest parking spots uh, throughout the development. Um, Mr. Pilgrim, your uh, one of your questions about the um, variance setbacks. I think in uh, the variance D, uh, the minimum um, setback, it's a little confusing, and I think that's why they're making some changes to the um, single family attached uh, code right now. Is most of the townhome developments that I've uh, been a part of, your perimeter property, you have your side, your setbacks, your front side, and rear setbacks, and we actually um, went, you know change that on Lake Drive back to 35 feet. I don't know why we had it at 15 feet originally, but um, that's been changed back to, to 35 feet. And all of our um, uh, driveways, we want a minimum of 20 feet from back of sidewalk. So we'll have sidewalks throughout the community, along the roads, um, sidewalks around you know the perimeter, so along Lake Drive and uh, down Industrial and then back in. So it'll be, you know, um, sidewalks, you know, around that'll, you know, add as a um, natural, you know, walking trails um, as well. Um, as uh, Mr. Fowler was saying, the, the offsets, the staggering, we're working on that right now. And uh, the plane right there has every other building set back five feet. Um, the code that y'all heard uh, earlier tonight, talking about the 20 foot um, separation, that from a development standpoint in, in water, uh, trying to grade and get the water to go around buildings, having one building set back 20 feet from another one called us a major um, grading and, and um, you know, hydrology and water issues, trying to get back and then back around uh, the front. So, even, but even with the five foot offset, I think we can handle that and it will offset the, the front facade. Um, some, uh, like I said, the uh, the amenities, well, you know, is a huge, you know, green lawn, open space area uh, to have for the homeowners to have the advantage. So the HOA uh, is mandatory. You don't have a, um, so when you when you close on the home, you pay a, um, an HOA uh, um, dues at the time of closing, and then you pay either yearly or quarterly, whichever you know you prefer. And every time the home sells, uh, the new homeowner actually pays into the HOA. So you're constantly having a, you know. Um, a healthy HOA as far as the you know, budget goes to maintain 
uh, the entrances to maintain the, the all the common area, the open space, um, and the amenity areas, um, the mail kiosk um, up front um, as well. So, um, yeah, that's a big um, a big plus here, and uh, we've had a lot of success with that on other developments um, as well. Um, so again, I'll keep leading to that. We're excited to be here. And, uh, Respectfully request y'all's approval tonight to uh, move this forward to the city council. And, um, we're excited to be here to uh, answer any questions y'all have. What do you uh, estimate the per unit price to be? <laughs> if you would ask me that um, this time last year, I'd have a better answer for you. But the way everything's going right now with material pricing, um, it's I'm not even going to try to guess. I mean, it, it's literally changing. Uh, every week we've actually um, stopped uh, selling pre-sales until our homes are finished on the developments we have now because in the you know four to five months it costs to build a house I mean we're having increases of you know north of ten thousand north of ten thousand price to finish it right yeah so um, I, it's hard to say right now what would you have said last year um, it'd be you know somewhere in the you know around the two hundred you know price point but again it's you know. It's going to be an interesting summer uh, in the housing industry with material prices and all that shortages and everything else. So it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be. I, I just I don't have that answer right now. Uh, if there were other, if this area is certainly well suited for industrial development, uh, surrounding area. Do you foresee any problem with that being an issue for people wanting to buy in? No, so we're, a lot of our uh, communities, um, you know, are used to that. I, I don't think so. I think, you know, a lot of the bonuses uh, to this is the access, uh, you know, ingress, egress. It's already there, having the, the two uh, access points, um, and then you know, right there at I twenty, um, you know, you're two three minutes, uh, you know, from I twenty, and um, you know, everywhere else you need to go. So I think it's a it's a plus. I don't think. Um, a lot of our developments, as Mr. Matthew's saying, um, in Atlanta, Clayton County, DeKalb, even up in Jackson County, um, you're seeing more and more, you know, residential uh, developments, you know, being surrounded by, you know, industrial uses, commercial uses, um, retail. So it's not a, it's not like it was, you know, 30, you know, 30 years ago where it was all, you know, separated out. It's, it's, uh, it's changing pretty rapidly. You are going to give the, all the new homeowners your phone number, so when they want to complain about noise or congestion, <laughs> they can uh, call you, right? I get them 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 already now. What is the uh, what's the townhome development you have been involved in that we can take a look at? Uh, if you go to our website, Rockhaven um, GA, uh, Rockhaven yeah, GA dot com, uh, you can pull up several different uh, communities that we have. Parks of Browns Mill uh, is one we're getting ready to start. Uh, Stonecrest in the city of Stonecrest is about 185 townhomes. Uh, Baldwin Park, um, Heights of Grant Park, Eastland Gates, Kensington Gates. Um, Are those all independently owned or they? Yeah, we don't do any women. We don't think we all were a for sale uh, builder, be simple for sale builder. And we have, you know, um, you have know, you ever ventured out beyond the metro? Kind of pretty much that's pretty much your telling me that sounds like Cab, Stonecrest, Atlanta. Uh, yeah, Jackson County, Gwinnett County. Um, Gwinnett's still. Gwinnett ain't going to work. beyond that. So, so Jackson's different, I agree. Yeah. But Chateau Alon's different than anywhere else. Well, different. this is you know further up in the city of Jefferson, okay. off 129. Okay. So um, we just, you know, um, we look all the time uh, for deals. I mean, we've, we've been down here looking for deals, Douglas, all around. So. Um, so we find the right deal. Right. But we've got several other, you know, projects around here that we're looking at. So if you go down to the, uh, if you scroll down to the, uh, thank you. Sir. What is your reaction to the uh, comprehensive plan concern? Oh. Ah. They said it more uh, <clears throat> eloquently than I'll probably say it, and um, they're a lot smarter than me. Um, it, you know, those are made to be changed. Um, as you progress 
and as time goes on, you're constantly having to update your future land use plans. Um, what worked, you know, 30 years ago isn't working out, and we're seeing that in the, as a prime example in an industrial market. Um, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, I would say, you know, everybody wanted, you know, 2,500 square feet, 5,000 square feet to 10,000 square feet, or a building that was divided up into you know, smaller office warehouse, you know, condos that you could have 2,500 square feet. That's, you know, those are not that, um, those are not in demand anymore. But what's in demand are these massive, um, you know, 500,000 to 2 million square foot um, warehouses uh, for the um, instantaneous um, online, you know, um, sales. Amazon and stuff. Yes, the, as Amazon, the last mile. I mean, they're going. They want you know a million to two million square feet. You know, well, I, I don't know the exact terms, but they're they're putting them all over the place. <coughs> so they can have you know when you click on you know the computer to buy something, it's there you know the next day, and that's what you know the world and you know everything's evolved to. It's it's not the smaller um, you know landscape companies needing um, or. Um, uh, manufacturers that are, are smaller, you know, need a smaller square foot of space on the industrial. It's, it's, it's using this massive, you know, 400 to, you know, 2 million, you know, square foot. Um, where, and I was reading something uh, last week, and I think last year in Atlanta, and don't quote me on this, but I think it was number one in the U.S. And I think we brought online somewhere around 38 million square feet of industrial space. And then this year is going to be another somewhere around 30 to 40 million square feet of industrial space from South Atlanta to North Atlanta to, you know, the Pendergrass Commerce area. So, you know, that's a massive, you know, shift in, in what's required. And the same thing with in the retail. We've seen the retail, you know, the big box retail stores, you know, going dormant uh, because of all the online, uh, you know, shopping that's being done. So it's not, you know, it's rapidly changing very quickly. And everybody mm -hmm. wants to be close in easy access to the interstates, the roads, and this is a you know prime prime property for that from a residential standpoint. Yeah, we had uh, consideration in the last meeting of a four hundred thousand square foot facility. Yeah, right. Other questions for the Yeah, I do want to ask a couple of things. Um, on the north side of Cross Legged Road and to the west of the property, uh, it looks to me like it's bound to be additional industrial and commercial development going in there. Do you have any information about uh, those projections and um, what impact they might have on this, on the residents here? Yes, sir. That's, I don't have a crystal ball either, but um, I don't, here's what I don't want to see. I don't want to see a failure here. Trust me. <laughs> uh, and I know more than you. Nobody gets into something like this to have it become uh, a failure or a red flag. But, um, you know, uh, one too long ago that something up in the twos for an attached townhouse, you know, you'd need an annual income of. 300 to 350,000, 400,000 to qualify uh, for a mortgage on something like that. And I want you to sell all of these out if you build them, but I, have you done any market studies about where your market's coming from here? Yes, and sir. It, it, it's, I'm sorry, go ahead. I just, you know, because. Uh, like I said, I've been away from some of this for a little while, but um, it seems like we're relying on quite a few people to have some good six-figure incomes. Um, but I, I think I'm, I misspoke. Uh, I meant to say the other way. It was, it's, it's no more than double their income. They were, you know, they were going to buy a house with a, they had to have a 300, I mean, a $300,000 mortgage, all they'd need 
$150,000 income. I said it in reverse order. But um, I hope that we have enough people of that income range in Bill Ricker to satisfy something like this. And are, are these, looking at the sketch here, these, it looks like these are, these parking vans are single car. Yes, sir. And is there car storage attached in the dwelling? Is it, are there garages or? Yeah, there's, it's a single car garage. So um, you'll be able to park one car um, in a garage and then at least uh, one car, depending on, you know, how, how there's maybe two Outside. in the driveway. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And to, to try to answer your question on, on pricing, more and more people are, um, are moving, you know, or, or driving mm -hmm. a little bit further to, uh, you know, for price point. And, you know, yeah. the best thing we have going for us, and nobody knows how long it's going to last, is, you know, the low interest rates. Um, you can't yeah. think on that, but, um, you know, so that, you know, it's a, it's a different story than, um, you know, it was, um, you know, just, you know, she, you know, a couple of years ago, even when interest rates were, you know, four and a half, five percent. Yeah. But, um, Again, it's you know it is a massive you know shortage in the housing yeah. uh, industry across the entire you know everywhere, uh, and we have done uh, market studies, um, both ourselves and with some uh, pretty um, uh, well-known economists um, in the area um, or in the state as well that we uh, work with, and um, you know they both you know said what a you know massive you know housing shortage. Um, in that affordable, you know, price point um, is in this area, all up and down, um, you know, this area, yeah. uh, 20, so. Yeah, interest rates get back to 16%. Well, you're gonna have a lot of multifamily here. Well, we're gonna have a lot of other issues other than that, so. Yeah, that's true. true. All right, I'm sorry, that's all I have. Is there adequate water and sewer for this? Yeah. So it's not an issue. You know, I've got I've got one on the comment or question. Um, so, you, what, what you're saying is that you know, based on what your studies are, I and mean, based on what Mr. Matthews is saying, is that uh, you know, the property is not really suitable for today's industrial use. But coming up next on the agenda, we have a 10 acre parcel where a 26,000 square foot building is proposed. And so that tells me right there that there is a market for something that where the you know, zoning would fit the way it is as far as the master plan. And I get it, the evolution and, uh, you know, we're- Well, we're all I'll say is uh, besides the housing, the industrial market in the last definitely three years, maybe four years, maybe five years, has been the hottest market and all of real estate. True. So nothing's no happened on no this. No arguments for me. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's you know he's owned it. I didn't realize that, but he's owned it since the eighties. I mean, it's been an overnight. It's, it speaks for itself. So I'm not you know, and I'm no you know, um, real estate you know gurus or land plan you know guru, but you know, as much foul as after you know, uh, after time after thirty five years, you know. That, that, speaks, that speaks more volumes than anything in my opinion. Well, I understand that, but when you drive through that area, it is just suited for industrial use. I mean, you got the Threads of the South back there, and there are a couple of industrial organizations that I don't even know what they do. It takes. Yeah, it does. Um, but I understand it's not good marketable, so, but it just reeks of industrial. And the only common area is across the road. Not common area, but well, here, here's a, here's a prime example that I'll, I'll give you. Um, in 2010, um, I was worked for a group of um, investors, and we bought 20, I think 26, 27 acres, what I call West Midtown on Johnson Road, and it had a 70,000 square foot. 30 foot uh, span ceilings uh, building on there. And uh, we took that through rezoning to the city of Atlanta last year and Ashton Woods bought it and was tearing it down and coming back with a 
three hundred something townhomes and some um, you know uh, uh, retail um, up front, I think it's about ten thousand square feet of retail, and that's in the mega of the industrial area in Atlanta. I mean, it backs up right behind you is the massive um, CSX. Uh, I mean, what's called uh, transition yard where they've got you know fifty different you know <coughs> rail systems in there where all the um, trains are coming in, dropping off, and all that. So. Um, you know, that just shows you right there that it's, you know, yeah, it's doing. And that's in the mega center of the industrial area of all of Metro Atlanta. Any other questions for the developer? If not, I'd like to uh, open it up to public hearing. Thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any uh, comments that you would like to make about this particular unit? Seeing none, we'll revert back to staff. Ron, what, what would be the implications if this is approved um, to the comprehensive plan? Would that have to go back and be changed? Or do we ignore it? Or? Yes, so the comprehensive plan in the future land use map would um, then um, ultimately would need to be changed um, by the city council and, and the planning commission. Um, so that's not really atypical for um, for the city to do um, once a, a, a change or, or a change of zoning that's outside of the category that's recommended in the comprehensive plan is um, is approved in, a, in any designated area. So it's it keeps in common practice with what we've done in the past. Any other questions or comments? Ron, I've got a question, and I don't know that, that it would be really practical on 20, uh, 21 acres here, but if the if it was proposed for a mixed-use development where you had some residential and some, uh, I mean, does that fit the zoning that it's currently zoned for? If it was uh, some retail space? And it, it would definitely move it towards conformity um, with an inclusion of commercial space, um, but ultimately the residential would still not be uh, conforming to the C2 zone standards. Thank you. Have you considered is there any medium, any middle ground between uh, staff and the applicant? Um, as far as the rezoning itself? Yeah, this right really, yeah. Or the compre the comprehensive plan, you mean? Well, no, for the purposes of this application. Um, it, honestly, you know, it. I would say no. Um, there's probably not. I mean, there's. It's pretty cut and dry, really. Either it's something that um, is permitted in the, um, or, or at least the, the zone that they're looking to go to is permitted in the comprehensive plan, um, or it's not. Um, I can only give a recommendation, as we know, and, and I actually second the, uh, what Brad indicated before, I believe it was Brad. Um, the comprehensive plan is meant to change and evolve over time. Um, it's something that uh, obviously, the, the municipality is supposed to utilize for all future development and planning out where we would like development to go, but the market sometimes has different um, realities than what the municipality may have planned X amount of years ago. Our last update was in 2018 for the comprehensive plan. Um, and since 2018, a lot has changed in the world, as we know. Um, so. Um, as, to answer your question, I mean, as far as middle ground is concerned, I mean, there's it's kind of cut and dry for us, and at least what my recommendation has to um, has to be. Um, but the situation is at hand, right? With the coronavirus, with um, the housing <coughs> market um, issues that we're that we're seeing, um, and uh, I think that this is probably a timely application, regardless of, of my recommendation. It was 2018 that we last reviewed the uh, mm -hmm. complex? Yes, sir. Okay, any uh, other questions? <coughs> and I will entertain a motion. Make a motion that we adopt or we approve uh, the rezoning of RA 0121 DA 
zero three two one up years um, from Rock Haven Homes to the property of twenty one point seven four acres. Is there a second? Well, I will second it to get a vote. So I will second the motion and then ask for a vote. All in favor of this motion? All those opposed? Opposed? It's approved three to zero. Now, again, bear in mind you will have to go before council um, sometime in the future. I don't know about next meeting in our so. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Okay, the last item on the agenda, or the last new business, is uh, the terrorist metal concepts seeking a rezoning. Um, Ron? Thanks, Chairman. Um, the Boteros Metals Concepts, Inc. Um, of Villarica, Georgia, um, is requesting the building of a 10.8 acre vacant parcel uh, from single family urban R2 to industrial medium density I2. And the applicant is proposing uh, to construct a 19,125 square foot warehouse and 5,670 square foot of associated offices uh, on the parcel. And it, uh, the parcel has always been zoned um, residential and only has access to Third Street uh, with no access to Sabre Parkway currently. Uh, the applicant proposes a land swap with 102 Sabre Parkway in order to gain access to Sabre Parkway and cut access off uh, to Third Street as a part of their development. And uh, this will bring all the truck and vehicular traffic uh, through Sabre Parkway and not through the residents, the existing residential neighborhood that the street goes into now. Um, and uh, the land swap, the way that it's set up, it would be approximately about a half acre um, will be provided by 102 Saber Parkway to this new this development at 1033rd Street in exchange for about 8,000 square feet um, for the subject property. So um, 102 Saber will actually will receive a half acre in exchange for the um, 8,000 square feet just so they can have an entrance to get into Sabre Parkway. Um, so uh, staff is recommending um, approval with conditions on this application. And our, uh, our conditions are, uh, it's two of them here. One is to provide a landscape buffer and sufficient screening from the adjacent residentially zoned areas. And as indicated in the uh, Bill of Zoning Ordinance and by staff, and the second is successful subdivision of the subject property in accordance with and considerably similar to the concept plan submitted uh, with the application. And the applicant is here tonight. Can... Right, can you see the map on that? Can you pull sure. the map? Okay. I just wanted to look just. Help me out, Matt. Where's it at? Uh, revised concept plan. Come on down. Yeah, right. yeah. Down. Yeah. Right there. Thank you, gentlemen. I apologize. Well, I'm hoping that was right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there it is. There you go. Okay. Okay. So, Sabre, just so I get oriented, Sabre Partway is? The cold is back to, uh, to the west. That's here. Okay. Yes. And so, we're going to cut off Third Street. Well, we're going to cut off Third Street from about where it turns to dirt. Return to the gravel is that about where it's going to cut? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I, I've seen um, competing maps, um, even the city's own map, yeah. um, that don't quite indicate where Third Street ends um, publicly versus privately. Yeah. But um, it would have to be any any part of Third Street that is on or bounds on three sides um, this property. Okay. Because okay. I, I drove out there, actually did out there a, a good number of years. I used to have somebody live on Second Street. So I actually drove out there on Saturday, um, and it looks like this is the only property quite a ways back off of Third Street. Yeah. And it looks like it's a private drive. You know, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it looks like it's pretty amenable to this kind of. Yeah, I mean, it, it touches. I mean, it's sort of the same way Cannon Cascade is. 
what used to be Cannon Casket, but it, it, on Cannon Street on the back side of, of North Dogwood, it's sort of the same idea. So, I just want to make sure I was oriented myself the right way. Yeah. I mean, or if you get a call. Right? Okay. Any other questions for Ron? We well, said okay. adequate. Um, <coughs> sorry, turn the microphone back on. Mm -hmm. I usually don't have to have one. My line of work is kind of shut. Uh, you said adequate uh, buffer. Is, is there a distance involved in that, or is that just involved trees? Or is it 12 feet, 18 feet? I would say this is a fairly quiet little part of town. I, I wouldn't want you know a large industrial coming in there. And not that that's necessary for us to consider, but I like to think about it. Sure. Um, so on page number seven of the planning report, yes, sir. and page eight also have the corresponding chart uh, or table to it. Uh, so we have in the column on table 7.8 new industrial development on the right side. Yes, sir. And they're proposing the IT zone, so they okay. have a four um, buffer four uh, for any existing residential. So you can see what a uh, type four buffer is. And that references the type four on the second page. So yeah. Uh huh. So okay. minimum of eight feet in mm -hmm. height, um, opaque fence and wall. Okay. Um, and that has to run, um, there's a number of different landscaping materials um, that are required in the order. Okay, because the way it looks like, I mean, it would, it would make most sense if I were building this thing, I'd build it as close to Sable Drive as possible, possible to save on paving costs coming on Sable Drive. Mm -hmm. So I'd make it as far away from the residence as possible. Okay. Yeah, the buffer width is 75 feet, so that's, that's the large, that's one of the largest we have. Yeah, the so, largest. yeah I'd build it closer to the same. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Could we hear from the uh, applicant, please? Yes, sir. My name is Andy Holmes. We're at 2525 Richardson Industrial Orchards on the road in Villarica. Questions? Questions or comments for the applicant? I, I guess. Um, are you guys just expanding or is this a new plan or? No, it's, we're expanding. We, uh, we're over there on Richardson Road. We've, uh, we're growing company. We um, have just completely busted the scene. So we need, we need more space. Uh, we need more warehouse space. We need more office space. We have people sharing offices. So we're just, you know, growing. And they said we're talking about, you know, it's hard to find a piece of property now. We've been looking for well over a year and, um, and finally found this spot. And we think with the tie in to Route to Sabre Parkway, we have perfect location for us fits right in with the, the general industrial vibe of the area. What are you going to do if the metal concept with the ways each other? We do extreme metal cladding. So okay. mostly commercial, some of these mixed use things like yeah. you're talking about, yeah. like the Howell Mill uh, corridor in downtown. We've done several projects down cool. there, but it's the ACM, insulated metal panels, yeah. just exterior metal cladding. Okay. Cool. And so you're going to, are you planning to use this facility to manufacture it or to store? Um, most of our stuff, depending on the product, most of our stuff goes directly to the job site, but we do do something called ACM, which is aluminum composite material. You recognize that from the front of car dealerships. That's where it's been popular for years, but a lot of places, a lot of architects are using it in other places now. So those, we actually fabricate the panels on site. And, uh, you know, it's just a, it's a CNC router table. It's not a big, heavy, industrial type process. You know, it's, it's some guys in a router basically making some panels. How many people will be employed at this? Right now we have about 25, 25 to 28. If you build this, we need? Uh, a couple more. It shouldn't be over 30, 35, at least for the immediate, for the immediate future. So anymore. you're actually relocating the whole business? Correct. Okay. That's Correct. Good. Good. Uh, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, we would like to. And then we're in like you know, Douglas County where we're at. So it, it's a, we're looking forward to, to coming westward and, and being a part of the, the growing community here. Any other questions or comments? Thank you very much. Thank y'all for your time. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. All right. What is I think the, we got somebody in the back. I want to. Yeah. Good enough, like public, public hearing. <clears throat> My name is Dave Freund. I'm the owner of Sabre Diamond Tools, hence the name Sabre Parkway. I also own a approximately five acre piece of property that Sabre is on and it's adjacent to this property that we're discussing. And I, <clears throat> I understand the interest in bringing business into Villarica. I've been here 35 years with this business, very happy. And it sounds like Harris is a great business. I've met the 
people who own the property. I've met the people at the church. But I'm going to object to this strongly for something that's actually in the application. If you look at page 12, small Roman numeral 4, <clears throat> where it says a zoning proposal will result in a use which will not or could cause an excessive or burdensome use of the existing streets. I don't know who wrote that, but they obviously didn't look at that area between 4 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon on a weekday. And that, that section of Industrial Boulevard, from the three-way stop sign where you exit uh, Porterville, that backs up past Saber Parkway, bumper to bumper, sometimes to the railroad track. It is virtually impossible to get out of Saber Parkway. We, we had to change the hours of our employees so that they could safely get out of the property at quitting time. They now quit at four o'clock because at five o'clock you cannot cross northbound traffic and actually if you're going south, you have to go in blindly into traffic going the other way. It's an unsafe situation. What you have right now in that quarter mile section, roughly from the railroad track to that three-way stop sign, on the west, you have Flyers Bakery with their, their employees and trucks entering that road. You have Gold Dust Park. You have two roads that are industrial park complexes to the west that bring in tractor trailers, some of which are truck terminals. So there's a lot of tractor trailers entering that quarter mile piece of property. On the east side, which is really the more problematic side because you're generally crossing traffic to go south toward Route 20, uh, you have a, a industrial park, you have Saber, the rental place, and, and several other businesses that are further north, including the new Dollar General. But what you also have is large tracts of land that have not been developed yet, that are zoned to be developed. Probably 20 acre plot on the south of, right adjacent to Saber on the south side, and across the street there's another large tract. Without changing any zoning, you could take a difficult traffic safety situation, which is right now, and actually double the problem. Now with this zoning change, what you're doing, you're creating another industrial park, 11 acre industrial park that's gonna feed into this, but feed into it through the only road they have, which is Saber Parkway, which is not designed to be a through street. It's a small street. Right now it's a dead end cul-de-sac because that's the way it was designed. If you zone this 11 acres, and what, I, what I'm not sure about is, if you're talking about a 25,000 square foot of property, that's two acres. What's happening with the other eight acres? Is there gonna be more businesses back there? We talked about 25, 30 cars just with this. How much traffic is gonna be trying to come down Saber Parkway and cross over into an area that's already a problem? I, I think this plan is not the best use of the property from the standpoint of the safety and traffic and what it does to the existing situation. So, in spite of all the good things, I think there's a problem with doing this, and I strongly object to it. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments. Any other speakers? Uh, yes. 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 My name is Mike Harris, uh, 2525 Richardson Road in Villarica. I'm the owner of Harris Metal. And um, we're very much looking forward to coming out to Villarica and working with, with you guys and with Saber. Um, and just want to make sure that Mr. Um, Crone, Crone uh, recognize that it's not going to be a through street because Third Street will close off, you know, landscape and fence accordingly. So it will be just the traffic that we produce um, with our employees and the material that comes in. Um, and we can, you know, work with him. As, far, as much as we can. It doesn't necessarily produce a safety um, issue in my mind as more of um, you know, additional uh, vehicle traffic, but we will make sure that all of our employees are very aware of the situation and sensitivity of it um, to make sure that you know, we work within those hours. You know, we work off hours too. We work different time shifts, so it won't be like there'll be a mass let out. You know, we're not a union fed type company like that. We're a small business, I'm the owner sister-in-law works there, Andy's my brother-in-law, you know, my best friend and his wife, we're, we're a typical small town, small business, um, and I just want to make sure that it's made known that we'll work and make, you know, 
to make use of the property the best we can and work with the you know, surrounding companies as well the best way to do that. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm Johnny Hightower. I'm pastor of uh, Full Life Gospel Ministries there, 102 Sabre Parkway. And I agree with Mr. Froman that, but that's a Georgia DOT problem with 101 that we all know it is, is an issue regardless of what you work at. We're, we're fortunate we just have to deal with it Sunday and Wednesday nights. But um, I like this. I, I'm the, Eros Metal has, has worked out very well with us, and I know we've been trying for Miss Cole and her family's been trying for years to work something out there. And I believe of everything that we've seen, talked about, that's been discussed over the years, this is the best use of that land to close off, and, and I think it'll work for our situation. I appreciate it. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. We're still ready. Anybody else has any comments? I see none, so we'll revert back to staff. Go ahead, Tom. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. Then this site, right down, up, down, sideways, whichever the road from the Rock Haven Homes, or Rock Haven, yeah, Homes Development, that was just approved. This is north of, of the Rock Haven site. Yeah, but not by a tremendous distance. Mm -hmm. uh, it's across the railroad tracks. It's, it is a, a reasonable distance, yes. Okay, but I mean, it's not 10 miles. No, no. Three quarters of a mile. Three quarters of a mile? Okay, okay so they're going to be pouring out automobiles and vehicles out of 200 dwelling units onto the highway there, right? Um, yes, sir. Okay, I just, well, the comment about this adding so much to the traffic burden on industrial and um, everything, I think, I mean, I don't know, correct me, please, if I'm wrong, but it seems like this may be a drop in the bucket compared to what else uh, is coming right there. Mm -hmm. You're probably right about that, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that speaks more to the the city's lack of planning 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when they developed Industrial Boulevard. Not, the make, bypass not making it a four lane. The DOT, you're right, they've been talking about a bypass since I was 12 years old and I'm pushing 50. Uh, and it still hasn't happened. Uh, I think that speaks more to that. And the city, you know, when they built the Industrial Park at the time, you know, we just want jobs of some sort. We didn't really care about cars because there weren't any people lived here. Uh, traffic wasn't an issue. Uh, we had two traffic lights. Uh, we decided we got the third one. Um, so it wasn't that much to, to worry about. But I mean, we're looking now how kind of short-sighted we were about traffic and traffic flow and, and development. Nobody thought there'd be 14 subdivisions of 101 uh, where everybody would live and try to make a left-hand turn on 101. Um, so I mean, I think it kind of speaks more to the lack of planning that we had all those years back. And hopefully, by doing this and being a little more forward thinking, we can avoid some of that 20 years from now. Um, it's kind of the idea that we can hopefully develop it in a, in a way that we don't have that problem going forward. I think that's kind of more of an issue here because uh, I do think this property is well suited for this. I, like I said, I've been here my entire life and that property has always been fairly, it's, it's, it's in the middle of the old mill village, yet it's a rural uh, piece of property. It's almost like a small little farm back there, and it always has been, as long as I can recall. Um, even as a child, uh, it, was, it was very, you know, I'd ride my bike before we go ballpark, and that area, I had a friend of mine lived on Second Street, and it was always kind of out by itself, so I think this is a good use of the property. Well, thanks for the comments. Um, I, I, have a, yeah, I have a uh, question, Ron. So uh, on page three, you've identified that the house that's existing there was constructed in 1850. Uh, you know, when I was out there, I went out there and walked the property and checked out the place. And it looks like there's been quite a bit of modifications to that structure. Um, have, do you, have, you know, have you looked at any historical significance to the property? I think that the plan, what is being proposed is excellent. I think that's, a, you know, the traffic is going to be a problem and it's going to keep getting worse as we progress. Um, 
you know, but as far as the historical value of the property being built in 1850 here, do you see anything, uh, you know, remarkable or special or documentable about this particular structure? Sure. So this, uh, this property uh, um, is something that may have some historical significance um, to the city. Um, however, it's not currently um, in a historic district of any form. Um, it's, it's not an a individually listed historical site in the city. Um, I'm not too um, certain on all of the particulars as far as the history aspect of it. Um, I, I have talked um, in the past briefly with uh, Sarah Pitts on our Historic Preservation Commission um, about this property and a couple other properties around um, the city um, and uh, literally Honestly, it was just coincidentally, this property, the, the applicant submitted an application for this property literally on the same day that I was talking with the commission about um, a potential designation um, for this property in the future. Um, so uh, we, we were going to start discussions on that on the HPC level. We were going to um, look into some more history on it. I know Sarah was looking into some history and documenting some things, um, but it's, and, and just judging by the age of the house in 1850, um, and, there, if, and although there has been some modification to the um, property, I, I believe just from what I've observed, um, that it could potentially uh, be a designation that could go through um, at the, not only the city level, but at the state and, and possibly, possibly national level. Um, but uh, this is where we are now. And an application was filed on the same day, so it is not um, legally a historical property but, uh, that would fall under the jurisdiction of the HPC um, or in, in any way be protected currently the way that it is. And, th and that really wasn't my question. My question really was, um, you know, the, the historical value, which you did answer that, but there may be some significance. So my question to the, to the property owner developer and, and to the staff is you know would you give the historical society an opportunity to go in there and do some documentation or whatnot before the property is demolished i would have is that to something that could be considered and then you know um, has no bearing on what we're considering here tonight but you know i did notice 1850 is a you know that's a pretty that's a pretty old one i would have to defer to the property owner um to uh, allow the historical society to, to do so, um, it, seeing that it's still owned by the same um, by Ms. Coles, uh, she would have to be the one to answer that. Is Ms. Coles here tonight? Is this the owner? Thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sir, you can speak from there if you My wife and I, her mother died and we bought that property from the other siblings. It's been added to several times over the years. I don't know exactly when each time something was added to it, but over the past several years, they have been. Uh, different rooms and what have you added on to it. fit into the historical society. I know I wouldn't want it in, if I kept it, I wouldn't want it in historical society. But I'd be glad to do whatever I can to answer any questions that you all might have if it's something that I know. Well, 
I think that comment is, uh, is pretty valuable. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I will entertain a motion now considering this uh, proposal. I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the proposal as presented tonight for Ferrell Metal Concepts, the applicant for property owners RA0221. There's a second. Would that be oh. with the conditions as presented? With conditions as presented, that's correct. Um, and, for and the uh, buffer and, make sure I got that, with the buffer and uh, subdivision of property in accordance. Uh, with the plan. Okay. Second. We moved and uh, seconded. All in favor? Right. Unanimous. Thank you all very much. Um, that concludes our new business um, and takes us to staff comments. Ron, you've had, and Bobby, you've had a round of applause. session. I can't imagine you have too many more comments, but. Got anything left in there, Bobby? I have no comments there. <laughs> I have no comments either. Okay. Any public comments? Everybody is leaving, so I assume none. I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Who is moving? Who is moving? I got his voice.